Welcome back to the channel, y'all. It's Darian with Darian in Tech. And in this video, I just want to talk a little bit about why I turned down a six-figure tech job offer that I received one time. And it's kind of be like a little story time, but I also just have some points that I want to kind of pull out. For obvious reasons, I'm not going to name the name of the company because obviously I'm super grateful for the opportunity. I'm super grateful they thought enough of me to extend this type of offer. However, I do want to just kind of shed some insight for the people who are currently trying to kind of be on that path to get that first six figure job offer, or I've never been in that position before, which I had never been before. And why, you know, it might not always be, even though it's a six figure job offer, a great opportunity for you per se. And I think it's important for everybody to kind of think about certain things when it comes to you and your career, when you're considering these job offers. One of the first most important kind of factors in my decision was that I didn't have a good interview experience. They seemed very nervous and they seemed very kind of awkward amongst themselves, if that makes sense. I could tell that they they knew each other, but do you know that feeling when like you can just tell that two people have something awkward between them? Um, I felt that when they got on the interview, it was like they said hey to each other, but you could tell it was like they maybe they hadn't seen talked to each other or worked with each other in a very long time, and maybe they had some awkward background or something like that with each other, I don't know, but. I definitely picked up on it and it made me feel a little bit uncomfortable as the interviewee. So that was one thing that kind of jumped out at me just in the beginning. Um, now, of course, like I said, there's a multiple round process. So this wasn't my very first interview. I think this was like maybe three interviews in when I first had sort of like a team interview with multiple people and I got to see how they interacted with each other. So I think that's important to pay attention to, you know, when you're getting these type of job offers in my experience, there's always multiple rounds in these type of interviews. I've never, or these type of jobs. I've never seen a job offered like, you know, sort of the, the, in the six figure range that didn't have like multiple rounds associated with it. As we started getting into the interview, I didn't feel like they had a good sense of what they were looking for or what the direction was that they were trying to go in. And again, that didn't really help the situation in me feeling comfortable with that company. The next thing was that this was a technical role that I was applying for or interviewing for. And the people I was interviewing with weren't technical people. And of course it's not a problem because everyone you work with isn't always gonna be necessarily technical, but they weren't even able to answer my questions. Um, so certain questions that I did have about the role and what was gonna be involved with it, I got really generic and broad answers. And I can tell that they didn't really, again, Going back to like that lack of direction I talked about in the first point, they didn't really know what they were looking for, but they needed somebody to do a whole lot of things. And that was just very suspicious to me because it was almost like they were looking for like a superhero or somebody to come in and wear all these different hats. And with my experience at the time, I knew that what they were asking for technically would have been quite a few different roles. And again, product, which I do now, is very much made of like a bunch of different, you know, roles and skills all kind of tied up in one. But in this case, it was like very different, just disconnected things that they wanted this person to be able to do. And the role itself wasn't a product role, but it had like a very generic title. And that's something else that we're gonna talk about that just wasn't transferable to other, other companies. And so that mixed in with the lack of knowing what they were looking for is made me feel like, do you even know what this person is supposed to do or what you need them to do specifically? And you know, the problem with that is you don't, if they don't know what they're looking for, they won't know how to judge whether or not you're doing your job. You know, they won't be able to really evaluate effectively what makes a, a, a person good in this role. You know, what are they, how do they mark success? And I don't know, like if if you don't really know what it is you need, it's, it's hard to kind of, you know, articulate that and find the right person. Stood out to me was, like I said before, this role had a really generic job title. So it was a long, and I'm not going to say the name of the title because, again, it kind of gives away the company, but it was a very long and generic and hard to define job role. And so the problem with that is if I had taken that job and I wanted to go somewhere afterwards, like how do you really articulate what you did at that job or in that role when it's not really a known thing or a very common role 
And this role wouldn't have been found anywhere else. This was like a very specific role to an individual company. So again, that's another reason why just because the money might have been, you know, great, I had to think more long term in terms of my career and what I would have been able to do after that company or down the road and in different options for myself. So, you know, if I had to stay there and, you know, been in one particular role in, in this very kind of company specific role for a long time, again, I just I didn't feel like that outweighed my chances of getting, you know, a more transferable job title, like a product manager or a product owner or technical product manager or something like that. So, which is kind of what I was going for at the time. So yeah, I that was another thing that made me a little nervous was that if I did take the job that having a job title specific to one company wasn't gonna allow me to transfer that somewhere else as easily as getting a more, you know, generic in the sense of like a more common job title. The last thing that really made me, you know, not take this job offer was that it was a contract. It wasn't a salary. And so with that, of course, you know, you may or may not know, but the health and insurance benefits are a lot less with um, a contract job offer. Not only that, the contract employees are usually the first to get laid off if there's ever cutbacks or you know, reduction of the company or restructuring, anything like that. So it's a little bit less stable in my opinion as well too. And also the vacation and PTO kind of structure was not the same for a contract as it would have been for a salaried employee. And so all those things were just big reasons why, even though it was a great job offer with obviously over six figures, it was not a good fit for me. And it ended up working out for the best, but you know, I just wanted to make this video to pretty much share with people out there that are aspiring to kind of reach that six figure mark. I just kind of want to put another side out there of things to consider when you're looking for these jobs or interviewing for these jobs, as opposed to just taking it because of the number that's being offered, you know, kind of really considering your career long term and the options that you have out there. I hope that was helpful. This is Darren with Darren Tech and I'll see y'all in the next video. Peace.